In this video for the very first time, I'm gonna be reacting to some of my most aggressive cases that I've ever done. And not only am I gonna be reacting, I've been doing this for over a decade. So I'm gonna be breaking down exactly what happened and give you guys context, but also telling you how to stop dog aggression and why it happens in the first place. And all right, let's get into it. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very memorable dog, this one. I remember if you guys if you guys are watching this video, you can see my all my staff behind the desk at our old facility. This is a, one of those dogs I said you guys should come watch this because we're not going to see another dog in like this at least this year. This is a really pushy dog. He's a 3-year-old intact Dutch Shepherd. This dog is a very memorable dog because he fights me tooth and nail the entire video. So we're going to watch this video. I'm going to react and I'm going to kind of go over context and behind the scenes of things of how it's happening. And I haven't seen this video in a couple years, so this will be fun. Probably about a year ago, I was out doing obedience with him, walking him out there, doing obedience, putting him in a foosh, doing turns with him, stop, down. He decided I don't want to do it, turn and bit me. I corrected him and he redirected on me. Yeah, so that checks out. This dog uh, had got corrected by his owner and he immediately turned back at his owner and tried to fight him and that checks out for sure for this dog. So I remember the biggest challenge for these guys were the dog is reactive to other dogs, but the wife in the relationship was a fairy to the dog and couldn't really walk him. And so that was like the whole premise of the entire out of state was this guy had a pretty good understanding of the dog, pretty good at control considering the circumstances. Uh, he's in law enforcement, military, really patient, uh, level-headed guy, but his wife couldn't really control him. And so that was like the biggest challenge. And obviously a dog that wants to kick your ass randomly is, it can be a scary thing, so. We had a trainer come over one day a few weeks ago. Guy said he's a former canine handler, Jill had found him. I was outside walking him thinking, well, I'll walk him first before the yep. guy gets here. He showed up as I'm on a walk. We walk up on our front porch. I sit down in a chair with Leo at my side. This gentleman walks up on the porch. Leo looks at him, eyeballs him, and then just goes at him. Trainer was like, I'm not working with a dog. I won't touch that dog. You need to think about putting the dog down. Just so you guys know, this is the best type of dog owners to work with. I mean, these guys understand what they have. They also have a really good understanding of reality as well as responsibility. And these guys are just looking for answers to try to keep their dog alive. And so they had that trainer that had come in and we see that all the time. We hear that all the time. We had a trainer come over and this dog Leo took his name and a number really quick, scared the shit out of him. And that's where you'll see a lot of trainers put up their arms and be like, yeah, you need to euthanize the dog. Now what I wanna do is just hand me the leash. All right, so now I'm gonna one. handle him for the first time. Checks in with you. He's checking in with the owner. I use my squeaker pouch. Good man. In that last scene, I want you to watch his tail. So right here. See how his tail is really hanging low? It's not up at all. If you watched the video previously or the, the scenes previously, like right here, you'll be able to see the dog's tail up. So you see the difference? See his tail? See it's wagging? He's happy with his owner. He's wagging. And then watch this behavior right here. Boom. See how that tail is down? That's exactly the things that I'm looking for as I'm working with a dog. This is the first time I've ever reacted to any video on the internet ever. So this is really cool for me because I also get to react to a dog that I'm kind of like training again. And there's things that I'm seeing that I probably, I know I wouldn't have seen because I'm, there's a lot of people in the room, there's other dogs, there's cameras, there's a dog in front of me that may want to try to kill me any second. This is really, really interesting for me to see but just pay attention to his tail right there. The tail is tucked under his leg. So you have a dog that, and you can see right here, his hackles are coming up on his neck a little bit. Uh, and so you can see a little bit of nervousness here. Hackles are basically the hairs that are on the backbone of the dog from the back of the head all the way down to close to his, his tail. And they'll come up involuntary when they're unsure of something. It's so interesting to see this dog's behavior change m matching his body language really accurately. So when his anxiety is up like right now with his whining, right? He wants to go to her. Why don't you just take the leash? Uh, so you guys can immediately see here, right? Anytime like, hey, take the leash, he's he's immediately like, oh, dad, 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 save me, save me, save me. That's telling you a lot about their relationship. Just things that I'm noticing that obviously this dog is really, really comfortable with the male handler. I mean, Dutchies are, you know, they heard. Man, I miss That's this facility. They they're like, hey, I want you over here too. And so 
this is where this dog starts to get frustrated. So I want you to watch this dog's body language start to change from let me go ma, let me go ma, let me go ma, to then now I'm pissed. And when I start handing the leash outside, you're gonna see a very dramatic change from frustrated to aggression to I'm gonna try to chew you up so you can let me go to get back to dad because I'm most comfortable with dad. So again, this is like one of those really cool videos to watch back. So what an interesting what dog. Doing. Let's he keep needs, rolling. He needs it. Yeah. I want you to watch this frustration. So this dog tags the owner or tries to, and if he didn't have a muzzle on, he would have definitely got him good. Uh, so that's that frustration. He immediately turned and hit me. On your leg? Yep. There. Uh, so this is our old facility. We have a 15,000 square foot warehouse now. Our old facility was 4,000 for the whole thing with daycare and our training room is probably 1,500 square foot. So anyway, back then, a lot of tight quarter stuff. So there's other dogs in the room and now we're gonna see how the dog's behavior changes around these other dogs. You know, do the exercises to make them successful. Okay, so we're seeing a build right here. I'm gonna rewind it because this is absolutely gold for anybody out there, dog trainer, dog owner, anybody that wants to learn more about behavior, these playbacks of videos of dogs reacting and becoming aggressive towards other dogs and other people is invaluable. You can't put a price tag on this. This is a lot of things that you, you, know, you don't get taught even in dog training school. So I'm gonna replay this back and I want you to watch this build. Do everything we can to you know, do the exercises to make them successful. So watch the dog's ears here. This is, this is the, it's very subtle, which is very interesting. You're gonna watch the dog's ears target and load on me and immediately go. So the build from, I don't really know what I'm gonna do to now I'm gonna go uh, is, is pretty quick. So is that a muzzle punch to oh, you? Yeah. Yeah, I want to switch to the 280C. It has a little bit heavier vibrate. Yep. On those little lunges, I want to use that to discourage it. So you have to be really careful when you have a dog like this that is frustrated and is really redirective and is not afraid and confident enough to, to climb the leash towards the handler when you're correcting with a prong collar. Uh, so what we're doing is we're switching to a dog chair 280C and we're going to use the vibrate when the dog reacts just to see if things change, but I'm giving you just some context of why we're doing these things. So the pager of the Tom Davis Dogger 280C is very intense. It's the most intense vibrate you'll see on any e-collar, and it's a really fair, safe introduction to uh, disrupting a aggressive or habitual behavior. And of course, link is in the description below for you guys to purchase that, you know, even on Amazon, so it's easy to get. Come. All right, so you guys are seeing Leo start to get really frustrated here. Uh, he's circling uh, a little bit. So that's like a very common, like, hey, I, I'm, it's like a fish, I guess. It's like they don't, they can't leave. So they get into like this pattern of this. That's why you see a lot of working dogs, specifically Malinois, Dutch Shepherds, maybe Border Collies, if they're in an X pen or they're enclosed, they'll just kind of pace. Um, when I worked with wolves, we saw it a lot with them too in the pens. He's really wanting to get to dad here. So dad is further away between the trucks and I'm working with him just to kind of read his behavior yeah, and see what this dog is about. So there was a little redirection. So he's getting really frustrated here. He's looking at dad and he's getting pissed at me. And so he's, he snapped at me like this and said, get out of here, let me go. I don't think any of that frustration is coming towards the other dog being that close. I think he's more pissed off that I won't let him go to his handler that he feels the most comfortable with. And frankly, that he likes. That's what this comes down to is this isn't really an insecure dog that's like, I need dad. This is a dog that's like, I don't like anybody but dad. So. Again, like this is so interesting to see how this unfolds. No. So you guys, you guys see, this is so interesting. So like watch his body, right? So he, his body is, is sitting this way, but if you watch his neck and his head, he takes it like this. That is like a classic indicator of like, I'm about to punch you in your face. You need to let go of this leash right now. Then he starts to poke, right? So he gets positioned on me like this, where he's frontal on me, he jumps up. But watch his arms, right? So he's trying to wrap me as well. So he's saying, let me go to dad, let me go to dad, let me go to dad, go to dad. No, right? Off. He's starting to climb and you can hear his voice go from, right so he's going from this like hey man let me go i'm anxious i want to see dad and then he's like you son of a you know what good so here he's starting to actually 
get upset with mom. That look right there is the same look he gave me. But again, guys, these dogs, especially bred from military programs like this dog could have been and likely was, is they're really a, a one person show. They don't, they're not great pets. They're not good pets at all, to be honest with everybody. I have one of these dogs at home and they're not good pets. Um, frankly, they're, they're, they can be, but typically, generally, they're not. And this is a dog that's like, just give me back to my handler, no one touch me and I'll be fine. And that's, you know, that's not really super realistic for a lot of people, but that's what you're seeing right here. The only, the only thing this dog wants to do is get back to dad. He's so used to doing things like that and then you ending the session. Good. Off, off, off. off. Here, let me see him, heel. So there's certain times like, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with, with you guys. I, when I'm working with dogs, I go very much on instinct like a lot of other people in their careers, but something made me say like, okay, I think this dog is, is really scaring this owner. Not in a like, oh, I'm terrified of this dog. I just feel like he started to really take advantage of her and she really didn't know which way to go. So I took the leash to try to grind things out uh, and, and and really try to work with this dog and work through some of these problems. He gives you- So are you just hearing that frustration again? So you can, he vocalizes frustration really well, very consistent. He goes from like, come on, come on, come on, now I'm pissed. And that's what you're seeing here is that whine, whine, whine to the bark. And the bark then usually then leads to a fight, which is about to happen here. You can see this, he's about to fight me. Yep, boom. Boom, reaching for the e-collar, try to desensitize him, boom, fights me again. He's actively trying to bite me. And so I wanna go over what, what's going on here. Um, so again, it's really easy to sit there and say on the keyboard, like never correct a dog uh, that's trying to come after you and you know, don't put attention on a leash that a dog is coming after you. I wouldn't change anything from what I had done in this scene, although I wanna explain in real time that I am trying to correct this dog as he's coming coming after me because he's never really been appropriately corrected for the behaviors that he's exhibiting right here. If you've seen some of my, well, hundreds of dog reactivity videos, a lot of these dogs have just never been told no. We have so many clients that have been very, very successful with correcting a dog and then they're like, okay, I don't, I don't wanna do that anymore. But that correction there uh, is, is, is really just to teach the dog like, hey, this isn't appropriate and I'm gonna see if that works and... No. No. So he, right now he's trying to fight me. To see his eyes, he's trying to hit me as hard as he can to get what he wants. Man, this is intense. He wants to hit me like that? No. So what I'm doing with the leash, just so you guys know, is I, I have the leash in one hand and I have, the, I have my other hand here. And so when he's coming after me, I'm basically holding him out. So it's kind of like holding somebody out as they're trying to punch you like the old comics. That's what I'm doing is I'm using this kind of you can't get to me type of thing. And again, it's, you know, I'm sure I could read through the comments of uh, a bunch of armchair dog trainers that are saying, why are you afraid of dog with a muzzle? But when you have a dog like that and you're not protected, uh, you know, you have a short sleeve shirt, um, you're gonna try to protect yourself at all costs. But also I'm trying to correct this dog as he's coming after me to see if I can break through during real time. And so he's tracking me right here. He's, he's watching me and he's following me. He's not trying to get away anymore. Good job. For those of you at home, everyone always talks about like tail wagging and stuff. That little tail wag was a very malicious tail wag. Let's play that again. That, that is uh, absolute facts there. So everyone thinks like the tail wag is, uh, you know, this happy thing. It's definitely not. It's so funny. Like I, I understand why some people frankly don't like the training I do because there's if you ha if you're given no context of what's happening in this video and my relationship with this dog and these people we filmed with these guys for three days and there's a 23 minute video out on it this is not your fearful German Shepherd that's sitting on the couch that's peeing himself because he's fearful I would never do something like that with that particular dog. This is a dog that's never been capped out on, no, you actually can't do that. And or you reacting like that and trying to fight somebody and be brutally aggressive to somebody doesn't get you what you want. So I'm trying to push him to limits to maybe see if he'll go, okay, fine. What do you want me to do? It's not gonna help these guys. If I'm like, you know what, man, he likes you better. Just take him. That's not the goal here. So when I pull him away, my goal is to, again, break down another wall or another barrier that he's putting up to say, I'm gonna fight you if you try to make me do something I don't know. And I'm waiting for that gas to run out and I'm waiting for him to be empty. So moving into the last day here, um, I called my friend Forrest Mickey and he gave me really good advice on scatter feeding. So scatter feeding is, was the saving grace in this video. 
uh, in the training. And there's a lot of really fun uh, scenes outside of this video and the owners are great and they were happy the whole time. Um, so there is some drama in the video, of course, the dog trying to attack people or attack me, but um, all in all, we're gonna do some scatter feeding here and we're gonna talk about why that is successful with this dog. Sit, good sit. Food, just like that. Nice, perfect. This is cool. Good. It's good that he's searching. That, that drive is... Sit. Good. So basically what, what scatter feeding is, guys, and it's something that you can use if you have a reactive dog, it is avoidance training, but with a dog like this, you can't avoid how the dog feels and you can't avoid this dog's frustration because it's really ingrained and it's nothing you're gonna be able to modify. Whenever we're working with reactive dogs, uh, our goal is to always modify the perception of the other dogs emotionally. And with this dog, because of his working lines and all the stuff that's involved in his genetics, that's not gonna happen. He's just a working line dog that gets frustrated when he sees other dogs, like any other canine that you see in the back of a cruiser. Not all of them, but I mean, that that's how they are. You want that intensity, you want that, ballsy behavior of like, I'm gonna do what I want when I want, don't tell me any otherwise. We want those dogs to make those decisions and that's what this dog is. So we're taking food and instead of like loading on the other dog, we're letting the dog know, hey, I have something and we're throwing it on the ground. So in situations like this, it's so okay to use avoidance and to use some sort of distraction for the dog because otherwise you're going against his innate genetics and it's gonna be very difficult for a novice or even a good, these guys are great handlers and it's still challenging. Instead of locking on frustration, locking on food. Julia, you wanna get a little bit closer? Food. Yes, oh, good buddy, boy. good, good. You can almost use a charge. So that was really close. So watch this dog, closer. this pit bull like sure walking like by. Charge. Good, good, charge, charge, charge. Frustrate him a little bit, agitation, mm -hmm. food. Oh, good, very yeah. good. We talk about protection. This is a great, this is a great video. And so what we were doing here is the other dog was coming out and so I put a, a handful of kibble in my hand and then the dog went like this and got really like into the kibble, into the kibble, into the kibble, the dog's walking by and then boom, we scatter feeded. So not only did we say, hey, find all the pieces of food, but we took the dog's head as the dog was walking by and then boom, put it to the ground. And this is again like, I know that we're not fixing anything here, but what we're doing is we're building confidence with the, with the female handler on, hey, this is what you're gonna do when you put the, when you put the food down. And we've, we have been in contact with these guys uh, and they have told us uh, how successful that they've been uh, after the training that we've done uh, on the YouTube video, Might, maybe somewhere in the comments here actually. Um, so it's really, really cool to see uh, how we did things. You know, I forget all of these like little tricks that we worked up with at the time because a lot of the training I do, um, almost every single training session I ever done is on the fly and kind of just like whatever happens happens So this is just a drive currency, right? So we talk about this and uh, I talk about this in dogs and marketing, right? So we have something that's more appealing to the dog the food drive is is more uh, appealing and is more of a currency than the prey drive or the aggression in general towards other dogs, right? So we say hey Here's a $100 bill, go find it. And then a $50 bill walks by. The dog's like, yeah, I'm more interested in this. And with dogs like this, that's what you have to do. They are not going to like dogs. They are not going to like people. And it's totally okay and it's totally normal. This is just a, an amazing video from start to finish. If you guys haven't seen the full video, I'll link it right here, but uh, an incredible journey. So I hope that you guys like this. It's a first reaction video that we've ever done. My goal is to constantly evolve and teach you guys new things about your dogs and develop a better relationship with your dog. I hope that you like this. If you did, seriously guys, like we, we literally will look at the likes and the comments of a video and be like, they either like this or they didn't. If you like this video and you want me to do more of this stuff, and more breakdowns, literally like this video and leave a comment. That's how we gauge to know like what to do next or what to keep in our cycle. So hope you enjoyed it.